This is Phoebe. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Meet Brad Pitt, actor, producer, philanthropist, and Oscar winner. How Brad Pitt became the sex symbol of a generation and continue to hold that title even in his 60s. How did the actor transition from the heartthrob with blue eyes to serious dramatic roles under iconic directors? What films has he produced? And, most importantly, why do his characters constantly eat on screen? Brad Pitt's path to fame was challenging. At 23, he arrived in the Dream Factory of Los Angeles with only $325 in his pocket. To make ends meet and pay rent, the actor unloaded refrigerators, delivered strippers to parties, and of course, occasionally worked as an extra on film sets, standing in a doorway, or playing a waiter in a film with Charlie Sheen. To be noticed and obtain the coveted Actors Guild card, he tried to speak during his brief appearances. And they were all, it was No Man's Land, D.B. Sweeney, and they were all sitting around a big table scene, and I'd come up with the bottle, and I was supposed to pour champagne. And I come around and I think, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to get a line in, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, because they're all having a conversation. Mm -hmm. I figure maybe I can slip this in. Mm -hmm. And I pour this young actress a, a, uh, a glass of champagne, and I go, would you like anything else? And she looked at me and goes, <laughs> and the director goes, cut, cut. Oh, and the first no. AD goes, you do that again, you're off the oh, set. And I go, no. Brad Pitt spent about two years as an extra, followed by episodic roles in TV series. For example, in the soap opera Dallas, where he played the boyfriend of one of the heroines for four episodes. In his first major film role, Brad Pitt played a guy whose illness prevented him from being in the sun without protective dark clothing. The film Dark Side of the Sun was shot in Yugoslavia, but due to the Civil War, the footage was lost for 10 years, and the movie was released only in 1997. After the initial unsuccessful experience, the young actor made his way into the movies as best he could. First, he appeared with Patrick Dempsey in the comedy Happy Together, and then in the horror film Cutting Class, where he played a high school basketball star. You fail gym class, you don't get your diploma. No diploma, no future, no nothing. In 1990, Pitt returned to television in more significant roles. He appeared in the TV movie Too Young to Die with Juliette Lewis. His character Billy, a drug addict, takes advantage of the vulnerability of a young girl, Amanda, who was eventually accused of murder and sentenced to death. Next, Pitt appeared in six episodes of the series Glory Days, the HBO TV movie The Image, and the film Across the Tracks. Closing the chapter on TV roles, Pitt starred in a Levi's Jeans commercial. The real breakthrough for the young actor came in 1991, when he played a heartthrob in the feminist film Thelma and Louise directed by Ridley Scott. After this film, the actor immediately gained sex symbol status. Take that cash you put in that bag right there. You got an amazing story to tell your friends. If not, well, you got a tag on your toe. You decide. The subsequent films Johnny Swade and Parallel World did not achieve great success with the audience. However, the role of a fearless reporter in Robert Redford's film River Runs Through It proved that Brad Pitt is not just a handsome guy in a cowboy hat, but a talented actor. In 1993, Pitt starred in two quite successful films, the thriller California, once again with Juliette Lewis, and in Tony Scott's True Romance, written by Quentin Tarantino. In the latter, his character never gets off the couch and constantly smokes marijuana. Since 1994, the actor's career has been on the rise. In the epic film of Edward Zwick's Legends of the Fall, he partnered with none other than Anthony Hopkins. In the same year, Pitt played the role of the melancholic vampire Lewis in the film Interview with the Vampire, directed by Irish filmmaker Neil Jordan. He shared the screen with Tom Cruise and a young Kirsten Dunst. Following this film, Pitt's popularity reached astronomical heights, and People magazine named Brad Pitt the sexiest man alive. Seemingly wanting to distance himself from the romantic image, the actor took on the role of a mentally disturbed seer in Terry Gilliam's science fiction thriller Twelve Monkeys. Pitt meticulously rehearsed all the awkward, insane movements of his character and chose a special voice tone. There's no right, there's no wrong, there's only popular opinion. You, 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 you believe in germs, right? I'm not crazy. Of course not, of course not. You want to escape, right? That's very sane, that's very sane. 
As a result, Pitt received the Golden Globe in his first Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. In 1995, Brad Pitt starred alongside Morgan Freeman in David Fincher's film Seven, a dark neo-noir thriller about the search for a serial killer. This film marked the beginning of a long collaboration between the director and the actor. Before Pitt, the role was offered to Denzel Washington and Sylvester Stallone, but they declined due to the brutal script. Pitt formed an excellent on-screen pair with Morgan Freeman, and the film became a classic of the genre. I saw you with the box. Who's in the box? Because I envy your normal life. Put the gun down, David. It seems that envy is my sin. Oh, what's in the box? Not till you give me the What's gun. in the fucking box? Subsequently, he played roles in commercially successful films of various genres, from a lawyer who suffered sexual violence in childhood in Barry Levinson's courtroom drama Sleepers, to an Austrian mountaineer experiencing spiritual rebirth in Jean Jacques Anneau's historical film Seven Years in Tibet. After the latter role, the actor is permanently banned from visiting Chinese territory. Next, he once again shares the screen with Anthony Hopkins in the film Meet Joe Black, where he plays Death, incarnated into the body of a young man. All these films had good box office numbers, but were not widely recognized by critics. And then he appeared, Tyler Durden. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. Second rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. The actor collaborates again with David Fincher and stars in the adaptation of Chuck Palahniuk's novel Fight Club. To portray the charismatic soap salesman Tyler Durden, Brad Pitt took boxing and taekwondo lessons. During the filming, a part of the actor's tooth broke off, but he decided to keep the chip, believing it suited his character. Despite an initial setback at the box office, Fincher's film eventually became a cult classic. In 2000, there was a collaboration between Guy Ritchie and Brad Pitt. The actor was so impressed with Ritchie's previous works that he personally wrote to the director and asked for a role in his upcoming film. However, there was a catch, Pitt couldn't convincingly imitate the British accent. Therefore, in the movie Snatch, he played Mickey, a gypsy whose speech is almost impossible to understand. Do you like that? Dags. What? Yeah, dogs. Dogs. You like dogs? Oh, dogs. Sure. Oh. The following year, a political thriller, Spy Game, hit the screens. For this film, Pitt turned down the role of Jason Bourne because he didn't want to be part of an action movie and commit to a long franchise. The opportunity to showcase his comedic talent appeared in the TV series Friends. Brad Pitt appears as Will, a former school friend of Monica, Rachel, and Ross. The Pitt's character hates Jennifer Aniston's character, whom the actor was married to at that time. Many jokes in the series revolve around the attractiveness of his personage. Oh, come on, Will, just take off your shirt and tell us. <laughs> in 2001, Brad Pitt's career became even more significant, not only due to the number of released films, but also thanks to his collaboration with Steven Soderbergh in Ocean's Eleven, a remake of the 1960 film. The star-studded cast included George Clooney, Matt Damon, and Julia Roberts. The film became one of the most successful in 2001 worldwide, and remains a benchmark in the heist film genre. You scared? You suicidal? On the set, a friendship blossomed between Pitt and Clooney, and Brad Pitt plays a small cameo role in Clooney's directorial debut, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Over the next two years, Pitt diligently prepared for the filming of the historical epic Troy by Wolfgang Peterson. To play the role of Achilles, the actor had to get himself in the necessary physical shape and learn to handle weapons. Troy became Pitt's first producing project under his company, Plan B Entertainment. You know what's there? Waiting! Beyond that beach! Immortality! Take it! It's yours! In 2005, the action-packed comedy Mr. and Mrs. Smith hit the screens. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie play married assassins, who hide this fact until they are hired to eliminate each other. The box office success of the film was accompanied by tabloid headlines about the relationship between the two stars and Pitt's divorce from Jennifer Aniston. Daddy, no. 
Subsequently, the actor takes on diverse roles, an ordinary American tourist in Alejandro Gonzalez drama, and the legendary outlaw Jesse James in Andrew Dominic's Western. And if I don't like his attitude, I will slit that Phil Doodle so deep, he will flop on the floor like a fish. My God, what just happened? <laughs> the portrayal of a detached man with madness in his eyes and an absolutely emotionless face earned the actor his second significant award, the Volpe Cup for Best Actor, at the Venice Film Festival. Brad Pitt has often stated that Jesse James is his favorite and best role. His gallery of unusual characters also includes a cheerful, but not very bright fitness instructor, in the Coen Brothers' black comedy, Burn After Reading, as soon and as I'll you give us the way. money, dickwad! A man living life in reverse, Benjamin Button, and an ironic Nazi hunter in Quentin Tarantino's postmodernist western, Inglorious Bastard. The role of Lieutenant Aldo Rain, nicknamed Apache, was specially written by Tarantino for Pitt. In Terence Malick's metaphysical drama The Tree of Life, the actor replaced the late Heath Ledger in the role of a despotic family father. For his portrayal of a determined baseball team manager in the sports film Moneyball, Brad Pitt received nominations for all major film awards. The actor can be seen in both festival arthouse dramas and major studio blockbusters. He even appeared in a Wes Anderson advertisement for Japanese mobile phones. Brad Pitt's first Oscar was for the film 12 Years a Slave. However, he received it not for his acting, but as a producer. There are a lot of people need to thank, so I'll just push on. To so my wonderful cast and crew, Plan B, Brad Pitt, who without him, this film, without him, this film would just not have been made. Currently, the actor has reached a level of stardom where he can choose projects that interest him with his favorite directors. His appearances in supporting roles are reserved for films that he himself produces. Despite being one of the most influential figures in Hollywood, Brad Pitt maintains his sense of irony. In the second part of Deadpool, he briefly appears as an invisible character, literally for a couple of seconds at the moment of his character's death. As Ryan Reynolds mentioned, Brad Pitt, as a fee, asked for a cup of coffee, but Reynolds himself had to buy it for him. On Jim Jeffery's show, Pitt plays the role of a pessimistic weather forecaster, advocating for global warming theory and making a bleak forecast for humanity. Well, Jim, carbon dioxide is slowly turning our planet into an uninhabitable wasteland, and half the population don't believe it. <laughs> However, it is the year 2019 that becomes a kind of comeback for the actor in the film industry. He collaborates with Quentin Tarantino for the second time in the nostalgic film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. For this role, he earned his second Oscar, this time for Best Supporting Actor. This really is about Quentin Jerome Tarantino. You are original, you are one of a kind. Uh, uh, the, the film industry would be a much drier place without you. And I... In 2022, the actor appeared alongside Margot Robbie in the historical comedy drama Babylon, depicting the rise and fall of characters during Hollywood's transition from silent to sound cinema. As of today, Pitt is simultaneously working on several projects, as both an actor and a producer. In September 2024, his joint film with George Clooney, Wolves, is set to be released, along with the sequel to the fantasy comedy from the 80s, Beetlejuice. Brad Pitt had long proven that he is not just a blue-eyed heartthrob, but a versatile actor who is not afraid to take risks and does not rely solely on his appearance. However, the question of why he constantly eats in his films remains open. In each particular case, there are own reasons. In Ocean's Eleven, his character is always on the move and eats wherever he can. While playing death in the film Meet Joe Black, he explores simple human pleasures through eating. But perhaps the main reason is that Brad Pitt is endlessly captivating, no matter what he does.